Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Welcome to Vinji. Uh, glad you're here on this kind of warm and muggy summer day. It's kind of like one of the last summer Sundays. So thank you for spending it here with us. I'm Pastor Justin. As I said to Merle earlier, this is my second week in a row visiting here at Vinji. I like it, but it seems a little too early to make a serious commitment. But I'll be presiding today. Pastor Gary is our preacher. This will be my first Pastor Gary sermon that I get to hear since I've been away so much this summer. So I'm looking forward to that, as I'm sure all of you are as well. This time I invite you to stand as we begin worship with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God full of compassion and mercy, abounding in steadfast love. Trusting God's promise of forgiveness, let us confess our sin against God and one another. Eternal God, our Creator, in you we live and move and have our being. Look upon us, your children, the work of your hands. Forgive us all our offenses and cleanse us from proud thoughts and empty desires. By your grace, draw us near to you, our refuge and our strength. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. In the mercy of Almighty God, Christ died for us while we were still sinners. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, your words feed your people with life that is eternal. Direct our choices and preserve us in your truth, that in renouncing what is false and evil, we may live in you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Psalms. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! My soul longs, indeed it faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for the joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are those who live in your house, ever singing your praise. Happy are those whose strength is in you, in whose hearts are the highways to Zion. As they go through the valley of Becca, they make it a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. The God of gods will be seen in Zion. O Lord, God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold our shield, O God. Look on the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than live in the tents of the wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. He bestows favor and honor. No good thing does the Lord withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, happy is everyone who trusts in you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I'd like to invite children forward for a children's message. Do we have a few children who will greet me up here today? Oh yeah, we've got a couple coming forward. Hi, my name is Pastor Gary. I've not been here very much, but I'm hoping to get to know your families better with time. Okay? Good morning. Sometimes people kind of get hungry between mealtime. Do you ever get hungry between meals? And do you have a favorite snack that you like to have between meals? Cookies. I like that. Yes. Do you have a favorite snack that you like? Sometimes people will cut up an apple. Moms like to do that. I like the cookies and the potato chips, right? Well, I need a volunteer today to help me because when I was, my children are grown, now grown, but I remember them having a need for snacks every once in a while, and so... I would make them peanut butter and jellies. You ever had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Hmm. The thing is, today I did two peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I made one with, like, gluten-free bread and organic um, butter. And it was a really, really wonderful kind of jam, I'm sure. And then I found some really soft bread and some creamy peanut butter, right? Creamy butter, peanut butter is better than crunchy. And then, then the grape jelly. Smuckers grape jelly. Okay? Anybody want to do a taste test with me? You want the really... <laughs> ah, that's the... Ex that was the response I thought I might get. But how about this one? Want one of those? It's, oh, it's going to ruin your it's going to ruin your your lunch, right? That's the problem. You don't want one? Well, I'll eat one. It shouldn't take too long. Yep, that's the taste I remember. Peanut butter and jelly, creamy, and just enough bread. Would it be as good if it was just bread? I don't think so. You need to have a little bit of that jelly in there, too. 
You sure you don't want one? Don't trust this guy yet. Okay, that's fine. We are going to hear a lesson today that tells us that Jesus is the bread of life. Um, but he goes beyond that. He just says, I'm not just bread. Today we're going to hear as we eat the bread of life that we're also nourished with spirit and life. That's kind of why I like the bread and the peanut butter. There's the life and the grape jelly, the spirit that's tasty. As we eat the bread of life, we're nourished. We're given strength for life in this world, and we're given strength for, well, a taste of life that's yet to come. So today, we are experiencing in this world that we need nourishment when we have to face, well, things we don't want to face. Um, challenges. We need strength for rainy days, for tragedies. We need hope, and we need encouragement. And those are things that get mixed into the bread when we eat it, when we share it as God's people. But there's also a part of the bread that's not even for this world. We were singing about it earlier today. It's more about a life yet to come. We get this foretaste that in heaven, we're not going to face any of these challenges that we've had to face in this world. Instead, we get to use our energy um, praising God, singing hallelujahs, maybe laughing a little bit because there's, there's just lots of good jokes to tell. And our whole relationship up there, wherever that heavenly place is, is a good thing. No more crying, no more tears, no more pain. And so we won't need as much nourishment. We'll just be able to feast and enjoy it all. When I began, the first sermon I had in the end of July, it happened to be the first day we started talking about um, that Jesus is the bread of life. And today's the last time, for a little while at least. And so I want us to pray the same prayer that we prayed a month ago. If you'll repeat after me. Are you ready? Maybe the congregation will help with this too. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest, and let these gifts to us be blessed. Blessed be God, who is our bread. May all the world be clothed and fed. Amen. Hey, thanks for your attention. I'm going to get you to trust me more so that you will enjoy the peanut butter and jelly that I bring. You can go back to your seat. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you. And Jesus said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. And when many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, he, he said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones who did not believe and who was the one who would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you, no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. And because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? 
And Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of our Lord. Can we build a trap door so I can get down just a little bit lower here? This doesn't quite fit, right? But I'll get there. Brothers and sisters in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. First, a story that takes us back 132 years. In 1886, the Pickway Hosiery Company opened in Pickway, Ohio. It would be the first of 18 underwear factories that would eventually operate in that town. And the biggest would be the Atlas Underwear Company. It kept 1.5 million soldiers in long underwear during World War I. By the end of World War II, Atlas was the world's leading manufacturer of flame retardant underwear. By the mid-1960s, Pickway was known as the world's Underwear, capital of the world, the, cap, the community always celebrated this fact. The great outdoor underwear festival occurred every second week of October. Festival events included the Undy 500, the Long John Parade, the drop seat trot, bed races, and of course, the boxer ball. And celebrities sent signed pairs of their own underwear that were then auctioned for charity. It was even into the 1990s that the festival was still going strong until a visitor one day asked, why? With that question, the community had to face the reality that not one of the underwear factories was still operating. What to celebrate when the past you remember and cherish is no longer the present that you face. I'm new, a newcomer now to Vinji Church, but my sense is that Vinji Lutheran is one of many churches across the land who now face a different present, certainly than the one anticipated when the, biz, the building was relocated to this location many years ago. We face different challenges than did our forefathers and foremothers. And these are challenging times for every Christian church. We may feel alone as we face the reality of a changing horizon, but we are not alone. Those who live in Christ are always preceded by and accompanied by a spirit who is greater than this world's challenges. I once served a congregation that had this wonderful patio to its south, um, south side of the church. However, the three evergreen trees that were planted in that patio had reached kind of the end of their, their life cycles. They were looking pretty scraggly and they all were diseased. So a project was envisioned to remove them and then in their place to plant three new trees. We did it in one of the warmest summers that you would have ever expected. So for weeks, someone from the property committee or the church staff was found taking a hose to each of those new trees so that it was well watered and its roots would take, take root into that patio. That said, every tree, even the ones that we've now planted um, eight years ago, are now having a life cycle that will end. That's true of church staff ministries and the church missions. It's true of life in the ELCA as a national body. We're in the midst of change. In a God Pause devotional, Pastor Phil Holton once wrote, while looking back upon his life and then observing like this, some of the most faithful of my friends, once aflame with the Spirit, are no longer active in any church. Some stumbled on Jesus' difficult teachings Others stumbled on the way the church has interpreted Jesus' teachings, and that is not surprising. What is surprising is that we are still here when so many forces would drag us away. 
Why are we still here? Because we just can't shake it. That Jesus has the words of eternal life. It sticks in our craw, and we just can't get over it, much as we would like to sometimes. And then Pastor Holton prays very quickly, Thank you, Lord Jesus, for sticking with us and for giving us the stickiness to persevere and stay connected to you. Now to today's gospel, where we hear yet again that Jesus is the bread of life. The person who eats this bread will live forever. That's the promise. And Jesus first promises these core assertions while he's teaching in the synagogue in, Ge in Capernaum. But last week, it was Jewish people in the synagogue who had disputed among themselves about Jesus' call to eat his flesh. It just seemed too far-fetched to believe. But in today's gospel, the people who cannot stomach Jesus' promises for them are the very people who are closest to him, his disciples. When many of his disciples heard it, they complained, this teaching is difficult, no one can accept it. But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before and leaving you to fend for yourselves? Left alone, Jesus' disciples would flounder in accomplishing the mission that Jesus was envisioning for them. So Jesus gave them a promise that they're not alone. The Spirit gives life, and the words that I speak to you are spirit and life for you. I'm telling it straight. No one can come to me unless it is granted by my Father. And at this uncomfortable juncture in Jesus' teaching, many following turned back. No longer were they willing to walk where Jesus was leading. I know that Jesus asks a question at that point, but my gut tells me he was taking, well, he was making much more of a statement. So he says, you too are going to walk away. You too are tempted to turn your backs on me. But this is just the beginning of the hard paths that we must journey together. Do you also wish to go away? And Simon Peter, Peter answers, Lord, to whom can we go? You, you have the words of eternal life. Brothers and sisters, we believe in Christ, the Holy One of God, in whom we trust. Trust as living bread and life-giving water, a foretaste of a feast that is yet to come. Kendra Creasy Dean, she quotes Douglas John Hall in her book, Almost Christian, What the Faith of Our Teenagers is Telling the American Church. Here's the quote. The whole purpose of a theology of the cross is to engender a movement, a people that exists in the world under the sign of the cross of Jesus Christ, a movement and people called into being by his spirit, being conformed to his person and furthering his work. Disciples are people who participate in God's movement toward the world and who are empowered by the Holy Spirit to represent Christ in the process. Kendra Dean then quotes Emil Brunner's succinct quote, The church exists by mission as fire exists by burning. Vinji's worship space, it's such a valuable setting for envisioning the cross, the resurrection, the ongoing power of Pentecost being lived out in the witness of, of generations down through the years. We have a cross above us, an ongoing sign that the risen Christ is living still. We have an eternal candle stirring flames of the spirit to life in people's faith journeys. Yes, I repeat Douglas John Hall's insight. Disciples are people who participate in God's movement toward the world and who are empowered by the Holy Spirit to represent Christ in the process. How does one illustrate that vision? Well, imagine, if you will, a handful of Bible camp counselors and their guitars strumming, leading a camp song around a campfire. First, a single voice sings the words to the camp song. 
And then all of the voices of the counselors join in and join a second verse. And finally, all the campers raise their voices and join in bringing the spirit of the song to life. Live Christ, love Christ, share Christ, be Christ. All these things do today, all these things along the way. Live hope, of hope, share hope, be hope. All these things do today, all these things along the way. Thanks be to God for the living bread that Christ continues to provide us as we are called to deter the bad news that sin, death, and the devil throw in our way in this world. I, for one, am alarmed by recent news reports in California and Canada where wildfires have now reduced homes, portions of communities, and businesses to rubble. Where does hope come from that asserts we can rebuild? We can start afresh. In the Hawaiian Islands earlier this summer, it was volcanic lava flows that were getting the, the national attention. And now more recently this past week, it was Tropical Storm Lane that brought down, pour, that brought down pouring rain and more questions on how to proceed. Last summer, last summer 2017, it was Hurricane Harvey in the community of Houston. Hurricane Irma, Hurricane Maria, the whole Caribbean. And so people in Florida and Puerto Rico, U.S. Virgin Islands and more, their lives were turned upside down. But it's now a year later. But there is hope. There is much hope. Yes, we're called to give thanks to God for what has been accomplished in the lives of people in these regions. Lutheran disaster response supporters responded with an incredible outpouring of generosity. Combined, you all gave nearly $15 million to hurricane response efforts alone. I quote from the ELCA webpage, Thanks to you, survivors of hurricanes in Texas, Georgia, Florida, Puerto Rico, the U.S. Virgin Islands, Haiti, and Cuba have been connected with life-changing support and the damage caused by the 2017 hurricanes was so catastrophic and extensive that the cover recovery will take five to seven years. Lutheran disaster response is known for staying until long after the headlines change. Five, seven, or as needed years. His thanks be to God for children of a God who live hope and who love hope, who share hope, and become hope. All this along life's way. I guess what I'm trying to say to you this morning is this. Christ continues to call his disciples to eat of the bread of life and to drink deep of that water of life with these gifts of grace. We're nourished. We're nourished to enter into the task that we may not be ready to enter into and then Christ gives us new hope. He gives us the Holy Spirit's courage and encouragement to enter the new waters anyway, anyway, and that with the help of God. Let it be said that those whom Jesus calls to follow do provide hope in their generation wherever people are challenged. Yes, thanks be to God for the spirit of hope. Hymn 729, the Church of Christ in every age puts it like this, the church of Christ in every age, beset by change but spirit-led, must claim and test its heritage and keep on rising from the dead. And Desmond Tutu of South Africa has written a text found in an African prayer book that it's been put to music by John Bell. It's now our hymn 721. Goodness is stronger than evil. Love is stronger than hate. Light is stronger than darkness. And life is stronger than death. Victory is ours. Yes, victory is ours through God who loves us. Victory is ours. Victory is ours through God who loves us. I close in prayer. Please join me. God, our refuge and strength, you've bound us together in a common life in 
All human conflicts help us to confront one another without hatred or bitterness, to listen for your voice amid competing claims, and to work together with patience and respect. Yes, teach us to set our hearts on you, and then grant us to share your blessings wisely to your glory and to the service and common good of humankind. We ask it through Jesus Christ, the living bread. Amen. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in our loving and almighty God, who abundantly provides the bread of life to all who hunger, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. That God bless the church in every place, inspiring strength and courage to boldly proclaim the mystery of the gospel that God bless wild animals and family pets, prairies and kitchen gardens, beaches and sandboxes, mountains and hearths, that God bless all creation 
and all forms of life. Let us pray. that God spread the gospel throughout the nations of the world, announcing the words of eternal life to peoples in every land and country, that God remember the poor and the brokenhearted and rescue all those in trouble, that God continue to show extraordinary love and mercy to immigrants, refugees, widows, children, and all in need. Let us pray. that God strengthen the ministry of all members of Vinji Lutheran Church, that God inspires new and creative ministry ideas for us as we ponder how to feed the hungry with bread and living bread, that God raise up the spirits of those among us who have needs, including Brenda Reynolds, Dorothy Naylor, Wally Gustafson, Karina DeYoung, Haley Crone, Bill Heike, Steve Fisher, Harold Selseth, and Harriet Rognes and her family who grieved the loss of Don. Let us pray. Almighty and loving God, only you have the words of eternal life. And so we look to you in hope and trust, knowing that you will do far more than we can ask or imagine. We pray all this through Jesus Christ, the bread of life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share the peace of our risen Christ with your neighbors.
Merciful God, you open wide your hand and satisfy the need of every living thing. You have set this feast before us. Open our hands to receive it. Open our hearts to embrace it. Open our lives to live it. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, gave thanks, and gave it to all his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come and taste eternal life found here in the bread of life. Amen.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Jesus Christ, host of this meal, you have given us not only this bread and cup, but your very self, that we may feast on your great love. Filled again by these signs of your grace, may we hunger for your reign of justice. May we thirst for your way of peace. For you are Lord forevermore. Amen. Just a few announcements um, before our conclusion of worship. Uh, with all this talk of uh, bread of life, it seems very uh, appropriate that we would spend a little bit of time talking this um, after worship today um, about what we can do as a congregation to, to feed the hungry in our community. Um, that comes at the conclusion of many years of us doing that through the community meal. Um, and so I do want to take a moment just to, to celebrate that wonderful ministry that we have had here in our past and ask that anyone through the years, if you've served at the community meal, if you've made food for the community meal, if you've helped the community meal in any way in those past years, would you please stand right now so we can give you uh, a big thank you for that. Thank you for all of your great years of ministry. I look forward to seeing what we come up with as a, as a new ministry uh, as we continue to prioritize the needs of the hungry here in Wilmer. Um, some really exciting news. I don't know if any of you turned to the back page and saw that the mortgage was paid. I didn't hear anyone shouting, you know, with joy in the middle of the service. So maybe you missed that. But we paid off the mortgage this week. Amen. Yes, very exciting news for our congregation, and thank you to the many generous people through the years who have made that uh, a possibility. A couple um, estate gifts made that a possibility in the nearer future than we expected recently, but we're so grateful for all of the gifts to the building fund through the years that have allowed us to pay off the uh, mortgage ahead of schedule. Uh, any gifts to the building fund that come in from this point on are going to be used to, uh, to repair the building, which uh, obviously is... Uh, Got some needs, too. So thank you for that. Uh, lastly, I just want to say that next week we're starting a new um, theme, I guess I would call it. It's going to last for about a year. It's going to take us from the book of Genesis through the book of Revelation as we hear uh, the overarching theme of God's story for us and how we're a part of that story. So um, we're hoping that that's going to allow everybody a, a new way to relate with Scripture. It's going to be um, brought out here in worship. Uh, Wednesday night in worship and um, in some other ways as well that you can kind of do from home with friends or family or study by yourself. So we're really excited about It's About Time. Uh, that's what we're calling the theme. And so that starts next week. Uh, as summer ends, we start. So kind of a weird time thing, but it's about time. So don't miss next week. Uh, do take a look in your bulletin for other announcements, but please stand at this time for the benediction. May God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine, grant you the gifts of faith and hope. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.
Go in peace, the Spirit sends us forth to serve. Thanks be to God. <laughs>